Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Uh, today, let's create a Node server. And if you need help getting started with Node, I'll have a little card up in the little corner bink, that uh, will have another video that walks through getting uh, Node.js installed and, and set up and running for you. So let's create a Node.js server. And so first thing we're going to do is require uh, HTTP. And then using HTTP, we are going to create a server create server and we'll have uh, our server um, our server variable here and then once we have our server variable here we can say server dot listen we want to say okay now that you've you've been created start listening start actually doing something and we're gonna listen on uh, port 8080 there and then we'll just give it another callback or callback here that when the server is listening we'll log out saying I'm listening on port 8080 just to let us know that everything has started up here so our file here is named server.js I can go here to our terminal and I can type in node server to start up this server and you'll see that it logs out I'm listening on port 8080 but our server doesn't do anything yet so let's make it do something so I'm gonna hit control C to terminate our current server our current running server and I'm gonna go here to the create server and I'm going to give it a callback here. And the callback is going to be fed a two, uh, two parameters, uh, two streams, a request and a response. And so the request, uh, if we log out uh, request.url, the request is what's going to be coming in from the browser here. Um, so if I go and save this and run our server here, and then uh, just type a bunch of jibble jobble, uh, you'll see that the request comes in for that jibble jobble. And if we say we did uh, index.html, it's going to request it, uh, that, that index.html. So what we could do here is we could say, OK, if, if the request uh, URL is a forward slash or if it's just going straight to the domain, um, we can uh, you know, read a file from the file system, such as an HTML file. We can compile something. Or maybe this is an API server, and um, you know, it's just sending back some JSON. Our server is going to be really simple. Um, we're just going to send back a, a, a single line of HTML. And so uh, to tell the browser that this is HTML, we are going to tell the response that we want to set a header. And the header we want to set is content-type. And we're going to set it to text.html to let the browser know that to expect some HTML and render this as HTML. Now, response is a stream. So if I had a file and I did you know create uh, read stream such as this uh, maybe it was like an index HTML file in my file system and I could pipe it I could pipe it directly to response here and that would make things really simple um, but what we can also do is we can just say uh, response.write and write to the stream or uh, what we really want to do is in the stream and write something to it to let the browser know we gotten, we've gotten all the HTML that we need uh, so just go ahead and render it and so what, all we're going to do is we're going to do obligatory bear here in a strong tag because this is a strong obligatory bear um, and then we can remove that so now here I'm going to start up our server here and go here to our uh, just forward slash page and you can see we get obligatory bear uh, as expected. So this is great for our local server, um, but like what about if we wanted to run this on a remote server and have it run forever that's just always available to somebody uh, out on the internet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to my DigitalOcean account. Uh, this is just a server out on the internet. Um, and then I'm going, I have the same code already uh, um, up on my server that I can um, run. So if I go here to www example um, you can see that we have the, the same code here um, as that we've written here and we can type in node server.js and run it and then instead of going here to localhost 8080 I can go to my server uh, port 8080 and I get the same obligatory bear but the problem is is that once I go here to my server and I close this tab and log out my server is now down it's crashed it's not it's not it's not running uh, so what we want to do is we want to uh, tell the server to, to stay alive and keep running forever. So if your server is on uh, Linux or OS X, there's a really simple way to do this. So I'm going to go back here to uh, the folder where our script is. 
of their www example. And we have our server.js here that we want to run. Um, and so we can type in no hup, and this will this is a command that will let us run another command, but it won't receive the signal that we traditionally get that will close, uh, that will terminate the process when we exit. And so we can do node server as normal, and then we're going to put an ampersand here um, to run this command in uh, in the background. So now when I hit enter, you'll see that we get a process ID. Um, for that it's running on and if we go here to our server at port 8080 we can see that it's running just fine and so now when we exit out of the server and we're no longer connected to it uh, and I refresh the page here and you can see that our server is still running hooray now let's say though that somebody else comes along to your server or or maybe something's going on with your with your with your server itself you know maybe it's just poorly coded I I tend to poorly code things quite often and it crashes so let's do kill all node here and we're just gonna kill every process on the server that starts with node and uh oh it also kills our server and that's not good because we want it so our server stays alive forever and even if it's killed that it gets restarted if, if it crashes it gets restarted uh, we just we really want it to stay alive forever and so depending on your operating system there's a bunch of different ways to do this uh, such as with Monit or Upstart or um, other kinds of uh, process management tools but since we're using Node.js and we want to stick with Node.js uh, we're going to use a module called Forever so to get forever we're going to type npm install forever and we're going to do dash g to install it globally and this will give us access to this forever command on our server so we can run scripts forever so now that it has finished installing we can go and type forever start server.js the name of our script and this will start up our server and run it forever so even when it crashes uh, it will restart it so to simulate this, I'm not going to type kill all node because that will kill every process that's named node, including forever, which is running using nodes. So we don't want to do that. So instead, we're going to get the process ID to kill. And we can do that by saying forever space list. And forever will list the processes that it's currently managing. And you can see here we have the process ID 118 there. And so uh, we can do kill and put the process ID to simulate this process crashing unexpectedly here as you can see here and then now when we refresh the server our website is still up forever has restarted the process and that is fantastic and even if we exit out of our server here and connection and close the connection uh, you can see that forever is keeping our server running forever so now if we want to go stop the server maybe we need to do maintenance or we need to roll it or do whatever we need to with it uh, we're going to go here to our example folder we can type in forever, not four star, forever, uh, stop, and then the name of the script that we want to stop, and it's going to uh, stop that script. Uh, we could also do it with forever uh, and the, the, the process ID that we have here from forever. We can say forever stop 1116, and it would stop it as well. Or another way is to just do forever stop all, and that will stop every process that it's managing. So the last thing we need to do is that we need to check for when our operating system is restarted. Um, and to do that, each operating system has its own way to, uh, to run stuff on boot. And so here on Linux, uh, I can simply um, do vi etc rc.local, and I have this rc.local file here. And this gets ran uh, by default on boot. And so what I could do is I could just add our forever and then the full path to our script that we want to run, example at server.js, uh, what we need to do forever start, uh, forever start. And this will have it so even though my operating system is restarted for whatever reason, um, it will still start up our web server here and run it forever. So I hope this has helped you learn about running a node server forever. And um, if it has, then please share the video and help others learn how to do this. And if you want to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.